Hello and welcome back. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a basic interactive light switch. So let's get started. So the first thing we gotta do is come up here and go to our project settings. So go to edit project settings, scroll down here till you see input, and then we have to add an action mapping. So go ahead and click the plus mark right beside it and name this action mapping, call it interact like so. The key for it does not really matter but I'm going to make it the E key. So scroll down until you find the E on the keyboard. And if you have, if you want multiple keys for it, you can add them just by adding more pluses like so. You can add as many as you want. So now for this tutorial, we are going to have two blueprints we have to create. So go ahead and go to your content browser, right click, make a blueprint class, make it an actor, and call it BP light switch like so right click again blueprint class actor BP light I guess you could call it like so alright so to start off we are going to open up our light switch actor and we will need two components in this one will be a static mesh component just like so name it switch or whatever you would like and then the next component will be a box box collision and make sure it's parented to the uh, scene root so just attach it to that like so and the size on this we can adjust it later when we see it in the world so that's fine for now compile and save and we can move on to the next step Alright, so head on over to the event graph and just go ahead and delete all of this. We don't need it. Real quick though, I forgot to mention, on our box collision over here, we got to scroll down here to collision preset and set overlap all dynamic. Go down here and select trigger. And what the trigger will do is it just looks out for the player basically. So now with the box highlighted, go ahead and right click. And you should see add events for box right here. Go ahead and click that. Click collision. Add on component begin overlap right here. And go ahead and right click again. Or make sure your box is hovered. Right click again. Add event. Collision. And this time end overlap. And what these do is basically detect whenever another actor overlaps the box or it stops overlapping the box all right so the first thing we're going to start off with is the begin overlap so go ahead and right click and search for cast to third person character right here if you're in first person it'll be first person character and just whatever your default template is it'll be for that character or if you have a other character you actually want to use then cast to that itself but basically the project template does not matter for this so go ahead and drag this up connect other actor to the object and connect the execute pins and then go ahead and copy and paste this down here and connect these up as well because it will be needed down here and what this cast to third person character does is it just basically checks to make sure that this other actor like the other actor that's overlapping the box collision is the third person character or whatever you cast it to. So next we're going to have to right click and do get player controller. And then off of this or first type enable input right down here. Drag off of this and connect it to the player controller. And then connect the execute pin to this. And then down here on end overlap we can do disable input right here click that drag player controller to the player controller and connect up the execute pins and what these two will do is enable and disable the input inside of this specific actor itself so come down here and right click and search for interact and it's that action mapping we made before and click that or wherever you named it you may have not named it interact. Now these two will control when this input action 
is enabled. This is also where we will be needing a extra variable because this light switch, say we want to control multiple lights with it just to have that functionality on it, then we can do so by adding a variable and call it lights or whatever you would like and then switch its type search for lights or bp light yes right here bp light and do a object reference to it and come down here and right click this to make an array and then hit this little eye so it exposes it in the main viewport which will be useful in a minute and then compile and save so we have access to the array elements and now as you can see there's nothing in it we don't really need anything in it right this second go ahead and just drag it in and then drag off of it and do a for each loop and this will loop over every single array element we have right now it's zero like i said but it doesn't matter at this moment since we're still creating it so on the pressed on the interact drag it into the execute and like i said this will loop over every single light we have so this is the specific light that is currently on so say we have three lights and we loop over two of them and say we're on the third one this will control the third one and there is a function we're going to have to hook up here that we are going to make in just a second that will control turning it on also one thing i forgot is right here behind the four for each loop we actually need two of these so make room and then drag out a node called a flip-flop and what this does is the first time this interact button or the interact function is called it will go to the a input and then the second time it'll be the b input then the third time it'll go back to a and so on it'll just alternate back and forth so go ahead and copy and paste this for each loop right below drag the b input right over here and if you hadn't have guessed by now in our actual light we are going to make two functions that are going to be called turn on and turn off and this is where those two functions will go so go ahead and compile and save and we can head on over to our bp light right here so go ahead and open up the bp light and we're going to need two component or we only need yeah two components once again we need a static mesh right here and we need a light you could do direct or uh spotlight it doesn't matter but i'm just gonna do a point light just for now you can design and get all fancy with it but in the static mesh i believe there is a lamp yeah sm ceiling lamp ceiling it's in the uh starter content i'm just going to use this as a example but you can you can use custom objects if you would like so over in the event graph just like before we can delete all of this stuff which there was no reason to because all the light the actual light will have is two functions like i said before so just click add function twice and name this one turn off and then name this one turn on and we will basically be controlling this point light right here all right, so in your turn on function, drag in the point light from over there, drag and drop it, drag off the node and do set hidden in game, and then drag the executes together. And since this is turning it on, we don't want the light to be hidden because we want it to shine, but we can copy and paste these two nodes right over here into turn off and connect this up. But since we're turning it off, we want it to be hidden. So just check this box. So now compile and save. And we are almost done. But real quick, we got to go add these two functions into our actual light switch from before. So exit out of that and go back to your light switch. And right here, when we first press it, we want to turn on the light. And then whenever we press it again, we want to turn off the light. This actually depends on personal preference, but say you want to control which one 
you want to do first. You can come over here back. I know it's back and forth. Sorry about that. But you can come back over here into your BP light and in begin play. You can actually set the visibility. So set hidden in game on begin play. And actually, since we want to turn it on at the start when we first hit the button, then this needs to actually be hidden at the beginning of the game. So compile and save and we are done with the blueprint portion. So jumping back into the actual world, we can drag in some of our lights into the scene. And they are on right now. It's just that's the default scene. And the the cool part about this is we can actually control we can customize what lights are controlled on what switch. So if we drag in a few like this and our actual light switch doesn't have a mesh on it. So let me add that real quick. Sorry about that. On your switch, since I don't really have a switch, just drag in like a little cube. And then down here on the collision, do no collision. And then shrink this down to fit right inside. It doesn't have to be pretty. It's just a little example. And But you can add whatever mesh you'd like. So drag your light switch in. And you can drag in as many as you want. But now the cool thing about it is that array we made. In the variables is actually right here. So if we add elements right now. As you can see we can have three of them for this light switch alone. So what we can do is drag or actually select this, click this, and as you can see, our lights are here. They're not named, but you can select one, two, three, like so, and that's all three of them. And we can drag in another light switch, like so, and we can do the same three again, or we could do one of them, like this one in the back, just like so, click the switch. And then, or I don't really know which one's in the back, so just click that one there. And then if we save this, and then we hit play, notice they're all off. But if we come over here to this, this one that we had all three of them turned on, and we press E, all three turn on. We come back, and then as you can see, we leave. I'm pressing E, and they don't turn off. But we come back again, and then they all turn off. We come over here to this one. We hit E, and this one over here in the back corner turns on. We come back, press E, it turns off. And the cool thing is, is we can turn them all on, and then turn this one. And the first time we press it, it won't do anything. But then the second time we press it, it will turn off. And then we can turn those two off as well so you can like dynamically control which lights are on and off with using that array that we created and well that's pretty much the end of the tutorial if you enjoyed or found it useful i know i didn't make an actual custom light switch but you can be creative and make that yourself but the point the goal of the tutor tutorial was to create the functionality behind the lights themselves so if you enjoyed it, consider subscribing, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Bye.